So I just bought this coffee and it's too hot to drink right now. But thanks to Isaac Newton, I can figure out exactly when I'll be able to drink it. So Newton said that the rate at which this cools is directly proportional to the difference between this temperature and the temperature around us. So I'll repeat that with the words to help. The rate of cooling is directly proportional to the difference between the object, the coffee, and the ambient temperature. We can put this into mathematics now. The rate of cooling, the rate at which temperature, capital T, changes with respect to time, is directly proportional to the difference, subtraction, between uh, the temperature of the object minus the ambient temperature, what I'll call A. Now we can put this into a differential equation now because we can say that the rate of change is equal to K times this difference, T minus A. And that really is the crux of Newton's law of cooling and we can use it to calculate these sorts of problems. So normally a Newton's law of cooling question would be a big long word question but I'm going to explain it to you, just put some stats down here and then we're going to solve the question that I give you. So the initial temperature of a good cup of coffee is between 60 and 65 degrees. Uh, that was a pretty good cup of coffee so we're going to say it was 65 degrees. Now I'm going to tell you that after five minutes the temperature had changed, it had gone down to 55 degrees. Now, what else can I tell you? I can tell you that the ambient temperature today, it is 15 degrees Celsius at the moment. And uh, me, personally, I cannot drink hot coffee at all. I've really got to wait for it to cool down a lot. My optimal Speranza drinking temperature is 40 degrees. Of course, the obvious question is, when can I drink this particular cup of coffee on this particular day? We start with our differential equation, like so, but we actually already know one piece of this puzzle. We know our ambient temperature, 15 degrees. The next thing we want to do is solve this differential equation. Now, note K is a constant. We'll have to figure that out at some point. T is temperature and lowercase t is time. Because this equation is in terms of uppercase t, I really need to get this side uh, in terms of lowercase t. So lowercase t equals something. The way to do that is to flip both sides of my equation. So when I solve that now, it'll be t equals something, and you should be able to integrate that fairly simply. So there's our integration, and it's very important here that you don't forget your plus c on the end. All right, so let's look back at our question. What we have now is a solved equation that gives us a formula in terms of temperature and time. We've still got a constant here. We've still got a constant here. Now, what did I tell you? I told you that at time uh, zero, the temperature was 65 degrees. So let's sub this piece of information into our equation. So I've subbed that in there. T equals zero, capital T equals 65. 65, 65 minus 15. That bit's going to be 50 there. Now that zero is still there. I've got a plus C on this side. I can move it over to this side to be a negative C. But of course, if negative C equals this, positive C will equal the negative of that. So now I have a C value of negative 1 on K ln 50. And I can sub that back into this equation right here. So this is quite nice, but it's not the end yet. But it is progress, right? Because we used to have an equation that had a K and a C in it, two unknown constants. Now we've got an equation with only one unknown constant. I can probably tidy this up a little bit by factorizing, but then also using my log laws. So factorizing brings the one on K out the front, but then we have a log minus a log, and we can use our log laws to do a division. So things are starting to tidy up, but we're not finished yet. We still need to know that K value. Now, we do have some extra information here. We know that at time 5, the temperature was 55 degrees. Let's sub that in for T and T. So I've subbed in my 5, I've subbed in my 55. That can simplify, obviously. I can rearrange it and isolate K. Now I've rearranged and then solved for K, and I get negative 0 0.04462871... I get nervous here with these very small numbers, four hundredths. So I keep a lot of decimals here because that can really change my answer. So keep it in your calculator memory and use that exact value there. Okay, I think I've got a full equation now, which I can write down here. So a full cooling equation now 
where if I know the time or I know the temperature, I can find the other one. Uh, now, the initial question was, um, when will I be able to drink when the temperature is 40 degrees? So we can put 40 into there. So finally, the time is equal to 15.53 minutes. Okay, and if I look at my watch, I think back a little bit, I think my coffee, perfecto.